Hello there and welcome to another session in our International Business Communication Program. In previous lessons we've talked about negotiation and the process of negotiating contracts and drawing up contracts and what's involved in international contracts as well. And in order to ensure that all of these capabilities and as an executive at your level and as a senior manager indeed, there are certain competencies and capabilities that you need to have in order to carry out your role. I'm sure that you are quite an experienced manager. But what I would like to go through in this lesson is to highlight some of those capabilities and some of those attitudes and behaviors perhaps that in the international arena are seen as very, very essential. If you are doing business in an international climate, then there are certain ways of conducting business that will need to draw on your capabilities. So I'm going to go through them and discuss with you each aspect as we go through the slides. There are capabilities that you need to conduct international business. Of course, there are capabilities you need to conduct business in your home country as well. But internationally, things do change a little, as we know with negotiation and with contract work. Doing it internationally is a different thing. So let's take a look at these. When you deal internationally, indeed it is important that you have a very strong sense of where you're going and what your goals are. If you go to a meeting and you find that you're not able to translate what your common objectives are, what your direction is and your focus is, then it will seem that you really are not quite the professional manager or executive that you should be. The way you are moving forward with your organization and your company has to be very, very clear. And you do need to be able to share this very precisely and clearly with your other parties when you're doing international business. They may want to talk to you about your company. So therefore, you need to have very clear goals as to what your company is doing and also what the subject matter of the negotiation or the contract that you're going to sign is about. So having direction and having a clear vision of your goals is an essential thing. You're going to have to be able to convey very well. Coordination is something that you need to be able to display as well when you're working on contracts across borders, when you're talking on telephones, when you're dealing with teams of other cultures, teams of other companies in different countries around the world. You have to have very coordinating abilities to be able to make sure that things are kept on time, delivered on time, etc. To be able to make sure that what is meant to be done is done through your ability to coordinate all those various parts of your contract. Keeping harmony also with your counterparts in other countries. Indeed, keeping harmony at home with your teams and your groups is very, very important, but even more so when you're dealing with people and partners across the seas where you can't see them every day and the way that you communicate with them is perhaps by conference call or by the visits every two or three months that you make. So keeping harmony is going to be an ability you have to bring forward and maybe use email more, perhaps use the telephone more, e-conferencing much, much more, as well as having meetings, if you can, face-to-face. -face. Keeping harmony within the whole lot of groups that are working on your contract is a very, very essential thing. And knowing the people in the team. You may find that when you are working with an international team, you have one team here in your home country, and then you also have a team elsewhere. So does that mean because the team is overseas that you don't 
place importance on them? Quite the contrary. If you can, and if you are at a senior level involved in this process, then knowing your team who is situated away from your home country is just as important as knowing the one here. So get to know them. Know who they are. Know your people. Of course, you will have to use some strategy in the way you're going to deal with what you have to deal with. And in an international world, sometimes strategies are quite tricky because of the different cultures involved. So you're going to have to be very careful how you make the next move, what moves you actually do make, and with whom those moves are, make, are made. So having a very good ability to strategize is one of the characteristics or the abilities, more so, that you will need to do well in the international circle. Being able to have very effective control of any business dealings, be they the negotiations or the communication you have, or settling disputes. Having effective control of the people you're working with across your borders is a necessity. As is the organization skill that you have and the planning. And here you may have to look much more deeply into the way that things are organized because you're not organizing just with your home country. In the international circle, you are organizing things and planning the aspects of, of your business with people who are in another culture. So your organizing skills and your planning skills are going to have to take into consideration a lot of the cultural differences that exist and the different business practices that exist between you. Managing your time is also going to be something you need to look at more closely. Of course, there are the time differences involved between your country and the country of the other party that you're dealing with. But also, how you work with them is going to be important as well. They may have a different perspective of time. They may be more relaxed with time or they more or they may be more strict with time, depending on the nature of their culture. Communicating is going to have to be one of the most important areas that you look at. How you communicate well. What sort of things you say, how you say them. And understanding the cultures of the people that you're dealing with in the communication process will be very, very important indeed. No longer can you rely on the usual pattern of communication that exists in your home country. You're going to have to be sharper and more focused and be more understanding of the other party in the communication process. The way you are able to persuade in an international circle also will be very essential to the success of your business dealings. You may come up against tough customers. You may come up against people who are difficult to convince. And therefore, you're going to have to sharpen your skills in this regard as well. The other part of communication that goes hand in hand with speaking and, of course, influencing is being able to listen and to actively listen. This will be very, very necessary because you're going to be dealing with people who are not necessarily native speakers of English or are using a, another language and you're sharing a common language. So listening is going to be a very, very critical part of whether your business dealings are successful or not. So as we go along with these behaviors and abilities and characteristics, try to think to yourself, do I need to look at these more closely in my own in my own scale of capabilities? What is it that I am lacking? What is it that I need to look at more closely? Resolving conflict may be an issue that rears its head, particularly if certain parts of your overseas contracts don't come through. So honing your skills 
on how to resolve conflict are going to be something you need to pay attention to. How do you deal with someone who perhaps doesn't understand you fully and a conflict is purely out of the language misunderstanding? Or how do you deal with conflict when the other party may not really like you that very much? They may not understand your habits and so this creates problems. Resolving conflict and caring are important capabilities you need to have. Of course it goes without saying, strong interpersonal skills, the way that you relate with other people, is going to have a bearing on the outcome of all of your dealings. So how are your interpersonal skills? Do you relate well to others? Naturally, do you relate well to people if here in your home country? What is it that you need to look at? And indeed, empathy. Empathy is a very major part of any kind of communication you will have, regardless of where it is. In negotiating, empathy comes into play. In dealing and trying to understand the other party in your international business concerns, empathy will play its part because you need to be able to genuinely take the interests of the other party at hand listen and try to come to mutual understanding on a lot of issues. And here, empathy will play a very important role. It could also be that in the discussions you have when you're sitting around the negotiating table, that you may have to look at other people's points of view when they bring them up. It may not mean that you agree with them, but you have to accept that other people do have points of view that may not be the same as yours, but they may be valid, and therefore you need to have an open mind and to look at their points of view in the discussion process. Out of this kind of discussion can come great, great results. There may be creative things that come out of listening to people with varying points of view as to yours. And not only in home countries, but all across the world. There is that building of trust that is required when business takes place. How can you do business? Well, how can you do it effectively and successfully when there is no trust? And so your skills in the way you handle people, in who you are, and the way you carry out your business and operate, is going to go towards building that all-important trust that will hold the two parties together. And trust, if there is real trust, will make sure that the contract that you sign and the terms you negotiate and agree on will actually work well and will succeed. Along the way, there are going to be times where you have to be decisive and you have to solve problems. Indeed, in the negotiating process, problem solving is a very major part of that. When you look at the styles and you collaborate and cooperate together to resolve argument, then problem solving and being decisive, these abilities that you hold, are going to have to be used to a great extent. So be ready for that. Your problem solving skills quite a lot in your negotiation processes. It goes without saying that you will need to be fair and transparent in whatever contracts you are dealing with, in whatever negotiations that are taking place. And ethics, of course, professional business ethics will come into being here. So being transparent and open, not having any hidden agendas, is going to work well towards you drafting proper agreements and contracts that are going to bring your two parties together and finally have successful business. Responsibility for all the actions that take place in international business dealings and being accountable for all the things that happen, that is part of your role. And showing these, being responsible, being accountable, is going to be demanded of you. It's not something that is a nice to have. It is a must to have and do. 
And at the same time, okay, as you can see here, taking the punches, taking what happens as a result of something going wrong, that is your responsibility. And it will happen. And in international circles, most definitely, these sorts of things cannot be avoided and cannot be run away from. This is very important. You have to stand up and be counted And in the international arena. This is part of the process as well. Taking the punches that come towards you, you are responsible and will happen when you're dealing with international business. Being committed and having conviction towards what you are doing is expected. When you shake hands, when you sign those contracts, when you finish at the negotiating table and both sides agree to the terms and conditions, you make a commitment to each other. And shaking hands, as you will see, and as you have probably done, is something very important in the international world culture. So having commitment to what you are doing is going to be absolutely essential internationally. It could be that there will be times where you need to adapt, where you might need to lead some change in the process. There may be things that happen that change the way things are done in your project work from country to country, dealing with your international partners and international teams. And therefore, being able to adapt is a necessary thing. You will need the capability to be able to adapt to different things as they happen and to cope with that. Of course, your expertise and knowledge. Before you launch yourself internationally, it is important that you make sure you have the knowledge and the expertise to deal with what is going to happen. There's no point travelling thousands of miles to another country only to find that you don't have the knowledge that's required to go through with this process. So that is something you'll need to regard very, very carefully and learn continuously whilst you are undertaking your business in the international arena. There is always new information coming to hand. There are always different ways cropping up and reviews and journals and reports written that you will need to seek out and look at. So learn continuously by, by seeking these out and upgrading your knowledge. And sharing that knowledge as well. If you are working with partners internationally, then share if there's new knowledge that comes up. Share that and also transfer your skills. It could be that you may need to transfer some of the skills you have to your international parties and their teams in order that the terms and the processes can be, can be maintained and carried out. So share those skills. Transfer your skills to them. Along the way, and it's quite true that you also need to have a very strong self-belief in who you are. It takes a lot to travel outside your normal domain, your normal area of responsibility, such as your home country, and to work in an international environment. And in order to do that, you need to be very confident. Having self-belief and knowing who you are, knowing your strengths and your weaknesses, will help you build up that ability to step on the plane, arrive in a new country, it could be Venezuela, it could be Finland, and to be able to conduct international business. Maintaining control of your own emotions too, at the same time, is a very important thing to do as well. So having self-control when you're in a, an environment where perhaps you're not quite sure of how to respond, there are different cultures around you, but I can say that if you have a good level of self-control, you will be able to manage your emotions and manage the impulses you have to get on with business in a very professional sense with your international partners. If you have a strong personal character, if you know who you are, if you are very confident and can act in an assertive way, then your strong personal character will carry you through all the meetings you need to conduct. It will be there as a very strong support to help you manage yourself well and to meet well with others. 
your energy, your optimism, this will also help you through the negotiating process. Quite often when you can display these, it sets the tone for something very, very vibrant and something very, very positive. And you will infect others, if we can say, with your energy and your optimism. Indeed, the negotiation process needs this, as well as the serious moments, to be able to be successful. And people will look to you to be somebody who can turn ideas into action. You are going overseas or you're working internationally, and that means that action is very, very important. Your international partners and customers want to see results, and if you're the kind of person who has that ability to turn ideas into action as well when you're discussing matters, they will be very, very pleased with that. They'll also be pleased with the fact that you may be able to inspire other people. When you can inspire others, when you are presenting your proposals and presenting your ideas in the negotiating process, if you can inspire your other parties to listen and to take on this responsibility to move forward with what you are proposing, then this is a very essential ability that will help you be successful. Your company will be looking to you to inspire others in those meetings you are conducting. So this is a very important thing indeed. A sense of achievement is what you really need to have as well. So if you feel that you can achieve things and you have a sense of wanting to win, this is going to carry you forward. Taking risks is going to also help you when you are in a win-win discussion, when you're trying to get a win-win negotiation result. It may be that through problem solving and through taking some calculated risks, of course, that you may be able to win over your partner and come away with a very, very positive and successful outcome. You might have to push yourself and take that risk, but this is something you have to be prepared to do in the international arena especially. Accepting challenges is something that the international climate is very aware of. They like to see people who take initiative and accept challenges. So being an international executive means that you need to come out of your comfort zone a little bit. You need to be able to think outside the box much, much more. People certainly in the international level are taking up challenges and they are taking initiatives to move forward in global business. And you also will have to take these approaches as well. Knowing your competition and what you are up against is very, very essential to the negotiating process. You need to have knowledge and you also need to have knowledge of all the things going on around you in your home country and also in other countries as well. Jumping the hurdles, jumping the obstacles is going to be a natural part of any processes or any communication and business that you undertake internationally. You're going to have to find solutions and find ways of overcoming the barriers that will come up against you. And using your determination in the process, you're going to have to fight your way through some of the most difficult times that you come up against in your different business transactions. Being determined is one of the key things that's going to get you right through to the end. Show your determination in whatever business discussions you have, in whatever negotiations you proceed with. Show your determination in whatever contracts you are trying to read through and trying to discuss with the other parties, you're going to have to have the determination to make things work at the end, to make things work out. And while you are conducting business internationally, you will find that you have to go the extra mile. You will have to give a lot more effort than usual to make sure that things proceed and to make sure that your party and the other party come away feeling very, very happy about the whole proceedings. Going the extra mile 
and also having all the capabilities that we've just discussed quite briefly here will ensure that when you conduct business on an international level, you will conduct it very, very well and you will be very, very successful at the same time. Thank you very much for listening.